All right, we're back on the Turbo 1968 C10. I ran into a little issue. I'm gonna have to make some modifications, but we're gonna get into that in just a second. First, I wanna let you know that I'm expecting a delivery that's gonna be a game changer. It's gonna make everything so much easier for me, and it's gonna help me out so much with my future builds. With that being said, let's dive right in. You can see that the truck's pretty much at the ride height I want. What I noticed is that the front end is barely compressed. There's no, no weight on it either. So once there's weight with the engine and transmission and everything on top of the front end, it's gonna sag quite a bit. The frame's gonna be really close to the ground. It's not gonna be the ride height I want. The only way to fix that is to uh, drop the front of the frame down a bit and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna make a straight cut where I already notched it. I'll fish blade it and box it in so it'll be super strong. We've got some wrenches and some gloves. Let's take off the front end. The front end is removed. I'm gonna load it up with some weights and then I'll get my measurements to know exactly how much I need to cut off the frame. You're about to see something pretty sketchy. Okay, that actually didn't work at all. I put over 600 pounds and it didn't drop an inch. It's time for plan B. This is my other plan. This is the Crown Vic I got the front end off of. Um, I'm just gonna measure the frame on this car. It'll give me a baseline for the measurements for my frame. It looks like I'm gonna have to take off three inches off the frame, which is perfect because that's actually the width of the notch I made. I actually lied to you guys, I'm not gonna be making a straight cut on the frame. Well, I didn't actually lie, but uh, it's a little bit of a change of plans. I'm gonna be making a cut just like this. And the reason why is because it's actually a lot easier to join the two ends of the frame together with the notch I made. The frame's looking much better and it's gonna make it a lot easier for me to design my engine mounts now that there's a lot more room. So this is what I'm thinking for my mounts or something along the lines of this. So it's gonna be bolted on the frame and it's gonna go down to my uh, classic performance LS block mount. And there's gonna be one on the bottom as well. It'll be similar, but it'll have to be a little bit longer. 
I'm gonna weld a pipe on the end of the mount that I'm making and it's gonna go right in between the two tabs of the classic performance mount and it'll be bolted right through both of them. It'll hold everything together. I'll use the plasma cutter to cut holes in my mount. It'll look a little bit fancier. I just heard a car door and I think that's the delivery I've been waiting for. As you just saw, I bought a two post hoist and I'm pumped. It's gonna make my life so much easier. As you know, working on the ground on your back uh, with no room, it's not fun at all. It was way overdue, but it's better late than never. And it's also a little bit crusty. And like everything else I seem to buy, it needs a restoration. Trailer's connected. I'm on my way to power wash the lift. Uh, it'll make it a lot easier for me to sandblast it and paint it. There's a couple little things left to do. I'm gonna paint the pump black, and there's also a couple cables that are frayed, so I'm gonna replace those. But other than that, it's ready to be put in service. I'll bolt it down to the ground, wire it up, and we'll be good to go. Next video, I'm gonna finish my engine mounts and integrate the rest of the front end to the frame.